Chapter 5, Carboxylic Acids, Esters, and Other Acid Derivatives. Look at all those sections. Good grief. Um, okay, so carboxylic acids is the first one. What is a carboxylic acid? <laughs> Fabulous definition. An organic compound with the carboxyl functional group. So then we have to say, well, what is a carboxyl group? A carboxyl group is a carbonyl group, so that's the carbon double bonded oxygen, with a hydroxyl group, we're more familiar with that in alcohols, that is bonded to the carbonyl carbon atom. So it's a combination of the carbonyl group and this alcohol hydroxyl group. And so the name comes from carbonyl and hydroxyl stuck together. So carboxyl, so carboxyl group. So this is what we're, what we're seeing in a carboxylic acid. Ways to represent this linearly are COOH and CO2H. So if you see something like that, it's carboxylic acid. So this carbonyl group is what we saw in aldehydes and ketones, and the hydroxyl group is what we saw in alcohols. And so you might think, well, a carboxylic acid must have properties similar to both of those categories. No, they're, they're different from both alcohols and the aldehydes slash ketones. So it is its own unique group with its own, you know, properties based on that functional group. Put my iPad upside down because that's what kind of a day it is. Monday with capital M. And then we can have derivatives of carboxylic acids. So a derivative is when we're just tweaking the carboxylic acid. So there's four different um, types of derivatives that we're going to look at. The first is an ester. And so here the hydroxyl group is replaced with, um, what did we call that, an acyl group? I'm blanking. An OR group and an acid chloride, that hydroxyl group is replaced with a chloride. Acid anhydride looks like that, and an amide looks like that, and we'll talk about those guys later. But first we're going to talk about the carboxylic acids themselves. So a monocarboxylic acid has one carboxyl group, and you can also have a dicarboxylic acid. So how do we name these things? Uh, this is supposed to be another section. Eh, it isn't. Oh, well. So, again, we're always going for that longest chain, and it has to include the functional group. The carbox carboxylic acids, this carboxyl group, is higher in priority than the ones that we've learned before. And so that longest chain has to include the carbon atom of the carboxyl group. Then naming the parent chain, we, we name it based on the number of carbons in it, so, you know, five would be pentane. We take the E off of that alkane name and change that to oic acid. So, like, al uh, pentane would be pentoic acid, pentanoic acid, sorry. We number the parent chain, um, always giving the number one to the carboxyl carbon atom. But that number one is not needed in the name because just like for aldehydes, the carboxyl group is always on the end of a chain, and it's always number one. So we don't have to write down that it's number one. Then we determine identity and location of any substituents, like we've done before, and that goes on front of the parent name. Now, you can also have um, a carboxylic acid with a ring in it, and so what we do is we name the ring and we add the word carboxylic acid. And whichever carbon has that carboxyl group, yeah, I was thinking that's a typo. Let me fix that. So if the carboxyl group, which is the functional group of a carboxylic acid, is bonded to the carbon ring, you name the ring and then you add the words carboxylic acid. So that, that whichever carbon in the ring has the carboxyl group on it is going to be number one, and then you name everything else, you know, the other substituents as usual. So here are a couple of examples of some small carboxylic acids. So 
this guy right here has one carbon. The longest chain is not exactly a chain, is it? One carbon is methane. So we take the name methane, we drop the E, and it becomes methanoic acid. This one has two carbons based on ethane. It's ethanoic acid. This one has three. Propane becomes propanoic acid. These are the IUPAC names for the carboxylic acids. So let's look at some that are a little more complicated and assign names to these guys. Okay, so letter A. We're going to find the longest chain. So right here, this is the carboxyl carbon. So this is the number one carbon, and then we're looking for the longest chain. And so we've got one, two, three, one, two, three, doesn't matter which arm we go down, it's the same. Three carbons, pentane, right? No, <laughs> sorry, propane. It starts with a P. Mom eats pickled bananas. Propane. Good grief. So this is propane, propanoic acid. So the chain is propane. And then we just get rid of the E and we put oic acid. And then we you know, have to name any substituents that might be present. So this carbon has to be number one, we'll go two and three, and this is a methyl group on the second carbon. So that's two methyl propanoic acid. Any questions? Let's look at C. I'm sorry, let's do B next. This is Mrs. K on three hours of sleep. It's not a pretty sight. Um, here's our carboxyl carbon. One, two, three. No matter how we count, we just get three carbons. So let's just let this straight one hanging out here be our chain. So again, with the three, this is also propanoic acid. Propanoic acid. And what is attached? Well, there's a methyl here and a methyl here. And this has to be carbon number one, two, three. This is very similar to A. It looks different because this is a condensed structural formula and A was the skeletal line angle drawing. But this would be two, two, dimethyl propanoic acid. Okay, and then let's look at C. What's the longest chain there? It's five. So we're going to go along here because that's going to give us five. So five is pentane. So this is a pentanoic acid. And then this would be carbon number one. Always the carboxyl group is number one. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. And we see that we've got an ethyl group on carbon two. So this is two ethyl, well, let's just start that over again, 2-ethyl pentanoic acid. Now, example D is written in linear form. And so here we see the COOH, looks like Q or something. Um, but this is the carboxyl group. So this is carbon 1, 2, 3, 4. Four carbons is butane. And so this is just butanoic acid.
Okay? We're just building on patterns of nomenclature that we've learned. Um, we can have dicarboxylic acids, which have two carboxyl groups. There's going to be one at each end, because the carboxyl group has to be at the end. If we look at that carboxyl group, this carbon is double bonded to the oxygen here and single bonded to this oxygen, so it's got three bonds made up as being part of the carboxyl group. It only has one bond to join to the chain, therefore it cannot be in the middle, always at the end. So when we're naming these guys, um, we take the, uh, the name based on the alkane for the longest chain, and, and we stick that prefix di in there, so dioic. So this is pentane dioic acid, because there's five carbons in the chain, but it's a dicarboxylic acid. So the same idea as when we did diols, the, the double alcohols. And then here's, here's one where they made a mistake in the name. They called it 3-methylpentanoic acid. What's wrong with that? This is a dicarboxylic acid. I looked at that and I'm like, are you serious? Yeah, apparently they are. So this should be 3 methyl pentane pentandioic acid. Because as written there, pentanoic acid, this would be a CH3 group and not a carboxyl group over here. So that mistake is in the textbook. It's lovely. We can also have aromatic carboxylic acids. The simplest one is called benzoic acid. So this is a benzene ring. <coughs> And so we take benzene, and that becomes benzoic acid. They, they lost the E-N. You, know, you might think, well, that was, should be benzene, benzenoic acid. Well, apparently that was just not working out, so they got rid of it. So benz, benzoic acid. And then these can be, um, have substituents on them, and we would name them the same way we did other things. So this is 4-chlorobenzoic acid or para-chlorobenzoic acid. Because the carbon with the carboxyl group on it is always number one. And over here, this would be 3,5-dichlorobenzoic acid.